Today on Commander Replay, we check out this GoFundMe submitted Leisha Sanguine Tribune deck. Can we finally get a win with Leisha? Find out next on Commander Replay. I want to thank my awesome Patreon supporters. We have one new Patreon supporter in Hopalong Bob. Hopalong, you are awesome. If you want to help support the channel and vote on which decks I play next, feel free to check out my Patreon at the link below. Welcome back, everyone. Playing some Leisha Sanguine Tribune. Take a look at this opening hand. One land. We're going to mulligan that. Into also one land. We're going to mulligan that one, too. A little bit worried about this deck. 35 lands in it. And it's got a fairly robust curve. I wouldn't call it a low mana curve. It's heavily three. I mean, it's probably about average, but, you know. But I definitely want more than 35 lands in an average mana curve. Uh, Mulligan, once again, going to six. Okay, whew. Uh, that's three lands plus a Magus of the Wheel, four lands. All right, yeah, that works. That will work. Uh, we need to put something to the bottom. Let us... We have three colors of mana without the Grand Coliseum. I think we'll be okay without the Grand Coliseum. So anyway, yes, welcome to Leisha Sanguine Tribune. This is a deck that's given me fits over the years. I haven't played it in quite a while. It's been one that I've been meaning to circle back to for quite some time, and uh, 2019 has had an absolutely insane release schedule of new commanders, so have not had time to focus on a lot of old stuff. Pretty interesting little commander, lots of cool abilities, maybe a little overcosted, uh, maybe a little less focused than some of the things that are coming out now, but I think it's a really cool concept for a commander. Uh, we'll talk about it more in just one second. We draw into a Radiant Fountain for our turn one. It enters the battlefield, we gain two life, it's colorless. I am thinking, I think we're just going to go Isolated Chapel Tapped right here. Probably want to get that uh, Phyrexian Arena in before we really do anything else, so that's going to be my main goal. But yeah, let's take a look at what Leisha does, because it's actually a really interesting card. So, uh, five colorless and Mardu for a 4-4 that says, This spell costs one less to cast for each one life you've gained this turn. Has first strike, it has lifelink. And then finally, pay five, put three plus one plus one counters on it, activate this ability only during your turn and only once. So, a lot of things going on here. Cares about lifelink. Uh, has First Strike, which is nice. If you activate that ability one time, it's probably going to kill most of the creatures that it runs into in combat. The casting cost is expensive on its own. You do need to be gaining life to really cut down the casting cost in this. And if you have to cast it a second or third time, it can get pretty rough. Won't lie to you. But... If you can keep it in play for a couple turns, you start paying life, you put a bunch of counters on it, you start hitting things, and you gain a lot of life back. Pretty cool card. Lends itself to life gain, lends itself to Voltron a bit. But I guess the biggest problem is, is that it is a high mana cost. You do need things to kind of go right just to even be able to cast your commander in any sort of like reasonable time frame. And it really doesn't like getting removed from play. The, the problem with that mana cost is that it is very high and recasting it does become an issue. But we'll see what we've got going today. Today's deck list was built by Jason, a GoFundMe donor. So thank you to Jason for sending me this deck list. And I'm really hopeful to put up a good showing with it today. And uh, we got Lord of the Board in the game with us, a Patreon supporter of mine. They are also piloting their Leisha Sanguine Tribune deck. They said theirs is Voltron focused, so we should get a good look at someone's Leisha deck today. Whether it's ours or whether it's our opponent's, should be fun, so I'm excited. Anyway, that brings back to our turn. There's a Vampire Nighthawk. Let's go ahead and play this command tower. Uh, nothing to do with two mana. Well, looks like we're passing. There's a Basilisk Collar for the Leisha opponent, and they did lead with a Weathered Wayfarer on turn one. Pretty good little card. So yeah, we'll take a look at what our opponents are playing today. As I just mentioned, Lord of the Board also piloting Leisha Sanguine Tribune. They are going the Voltron route. We'll see what they've got going. See if there's any tech that we're missing or if there's any tech we have that they don't. Uh, moving on from that, we have Frodo the Chef piloting Muzio Visionary Architect. Pretty sweet little card. Uh, pay four. Look at the top X cards of your library where X is the highest converted mana cost among artifacts you control. You may reveal an artifact from among them, put it onto the battlefield, rest on the bottom in a random order. Konama's Reach coming in for the Prime Speaker opponent. And then finally, we've got Champion of Thune piloting Prime Speaker Zagana. And uh, we were talking about it before the game. It's going to be a Simic value, draw all the cards, play all the stuff kind of deck. They are going to try to value us to death. Uh, we do have a lot of control elements in the deck. There did seem to be a pretty healthy amount of removal when I was checking out the deck before the game. Uh, so we should have some answers to things, which makes me feel a little bit better about that. But uh, Simic decks in general just scare me. Simic's got some really nasty stuff available to it. And also, the ability to just to, like draw 10 cards late in the game is uh, really, really strong. So that is something you got to be careful of. You always got to be careful with the combo potential, combo potential with Muzio. But... 
yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see what's going on this game. Hopefully our other opponents do a good job at keeping other opponents in check. Because I'm not completely confident that we can just take Prime Speaker Zagana in a straight fight. Uh, based on the amount of card draw that they can get going. Also, I do worry about interaction from them. Rapid hybridization, Pongify, reality shift, that sort of stuff can be a real issue for our commander. So at the end of step, opponent activated the Weathered Wayfarer, grabbed themselves a Cavern of Souls, probably a pretty good idea for this deck. Really don't want your commander getting countered. And they're going to suit up the Basilisk Collar onto the Weathered Wayfarer, got themselves a nice little blocker, and are ready to activate it once again. These things are like 10 bucks in paper. Who knew, right? <laughs> Mana Crypt coming in for the Muzio opponent. And even with the Wayfarer being $10, like, for me, it's been fine. Like, it's decent. It never, like, blows me away in terms of power. Occasionally, there's, like, a really specific land that you're searching for that it helps you get. But, I don't know. I guess I tend to only play it in faster metas where being a one-drop is really, really important. But even in then, I feel like I never really activate it more than like once or twice a game. It is decent, but it doesn't feel like it's $10 decent to me, to be completely honest. And I think that's just more a product of it hasn't had a reprint in a very long time and its supply is just way lower than most things that are printed now. So opponent plays themselves a Tezzeret. It's got a fancy new border on it and uh, gets themselves more Mana Rocks. So they are off to the Mana Rock race. Uh, we don't have much for that right now. We got a lot of nothing happening for that. Here comes a Solemn Simulacrum for the Prime Speaker Zagana. Yeah. Get themselves some more ramp and card draw when it dies. Uh, getting a little worried about the combo potential of the Muzio opponent. Hopefully the green opponent brought some artifact removal. Potentially in the form of Bane of Progress or something else that might slow them down just a bit. Uh, instead they're just going to go for a Priest of Titania and get themselves even more ramp, so... Looks like everyone just off to the races ramp-wise. Brings it back to our turn. We get a Phyrexian Arena trigger. We got a Blood Mist and a Chandra's Ignition. Eh, those can help. Those can help. Let us... The most mana efficient thing to do is play a Blood Mist, but I think we're a ways away from needing the Blood Mists. I actually want to get the Vampire Nighthawk in. If I do my math right, that's 8 mana. The next turn will be on 5 lands with the Radiant Fountain... That'll subtract. Yeah, we, we should be able to get Leisha in pretty easily next turn if we go for Vampire Nighthawk right here. So I think we're going to do that. Uh, play the Mountain. Play the Nighthawk. And we'll pass turn like that. Uh, interestingly, Chandra's Ignition says target creature you control deals the damage, which means when you have Death Touch, you can kill every other creature in play. So that is a thing to think about and a uh, potentially a nice little form of board wipe right there if we don't find another one along the way. Opponent grabs themselves an Ancient Tomb with the Weathered Wayfarer. Yeah, that's one that I go for pretty often when I do play Weathered Wayfarer. Is usually like, Ancient Tomb, I need mana ramp so badly, let's go. And then after that, I'll probably go for like a Misfell Plains or an Ameria, depending on which deck we're talking about or what things we need. Opponent gonna play a Sword of Sinew and Steel. I'm liking this, so if they suit this up, they can start blowing up some of these artifacts, and that seems like a really good idea. Oh no, they didn't attack! Why didn't they attack? Oh, they misclicked! No! No, we need artifacts to die. Oh, God, the blue player is going to win. Good game. Pick up our cards. Let's go home. <laughs> There's a Grand Architect for opponent. Are they infinite? I forget what that one needs to go infinite. Opponent casts their commander. Let's see. If you make that one blue, opponent's going to lay down a Filigree Sages. Has the ability to untap artifacts. Well, uh, we're going to have to Chandra's Ignition this turn. Uh, that is an artifact itself, so that does die to artifact-y things. Whew, that was, uh, that was a big punt out of our opponent. A really big punt. Guardian Project coming down for the Simic player. Yep. Bane of Progress. We need that Bane of Progress. Nope. It's a Conjurer's Closet. Uh, Conjurer's Closet. End step trigger. Yep. Conjurer's on Psalm Simulacrum. Seems pretty good with a Guardian Project. Oh, it's so bad. It's all bad. It's all bad. So, I mean, it's turn five right now, and we need a board wipe. And that's... That's generally been the state of affairs that I've been running into when I've been playing games recently, is that around turn five, you better wipe the board, otherwise people are close to winning within the next turn or two, so... Yeah. Uh, we draw a land and an Oathsworn Knight with the Phyrexian Arena. Thinking about this turn, we really gotta lay down the Chandra's Ignition and get rid of all this stuff. This is, like, Combo City right here. Uh, that's not gonna fly. Priest of Titania, probably gonna do too much work at some point. Solemn already doing work. The Weather Wayfarer will survive because of the Pro Red. So that's fine. They can uh, blast some stuff away over there, which seems like a really good idea. Question is, we can kill the Tezzeret, actually. That's a thing that we can do. Yeah, so I guess we're doing that. Play the planes. Play the Chandra's Ignition. All the other creatures except the Wayfarer go down and our Nighthawk. Send the Nighthawk into the Tezzeret. We go up to 54 life. 
sadly, we don't have the mana left over to cast our commander, but, you know, that needed to happen right there, because, yep, the blue player made me real nervous. I was staring at the Grand Architect and the Basalt Monolith. It's not a combo that I've seen in a long time, so I forget how it works, but I know Grand Architect goes infinite with something, so... That's not a thing you want sticking in play. Opponent's gonna get themselves a Feast and Famine. Yep, making that Weathered Wayfarer a real nasty. Gonna cast a Vampiric Tutor. Yep. Opponent going into the Simic player. Makes me happy. So they're gonna get hit with two swords. That's a Sinew and Steel and a Feast and Famine. Uh, <laughs> it's really surprising when uh, I am not the one with the best artifacts in play, because usually I play a lot of artifacts. So. so opponent decides to shoot the Basalt Monolith with the Feast and Famine. Ooh, opponent discards a Gaia's Cradle. What? Maybe all the creatures got blown up. Still, I'd hold on to it. I bet that means they got really nasty other stuff in their hand. If I had to venture a guess, Cyclonic Rift is in their hand. There's no way it's not. What's in your hand that you discard a guy as Cradle? Like, that's that's the question. And I get it, they don't have creatures, but they will again at some point. So when they do, that card is bonkers. Here comes Muzio back to play. Yep. Oh, opponent did cast their commander, by the way. I missed that. So their Leisha coming into play. They activate the ability. It's a 7-7. Seven, seven. Pretty big. Pretty, pretty big. Means I'm thinking about the Crackling Doom now, honestly. Oof. Prime Speaker Zagana, not casting anything. We draw a Well of Lost Dreams and a Gerard Capuchin. Uh, for those that may not be familiar, this is one I've actually looked at building a couple of times, just haven't gotten around to it yet. But it says, 5 mana, 3, 4. At the beginning of your upkeep, you gain 1 life for each card and target opponent's hand. A tap target creature, activate this ability only if Capuchin is attacking. So, obviously a life gain card, and in a deck where we want to be gaining a lot of life... Uh, particularly during our turn. Not bad. It's not bad. That'll give us a pretty significant amount of cost reduction for Alicia, so that is something that I do like. Oh, man. We are going to be on six mana this turn. Uh, so probably cast a three drop and sit on Crackling Doom, because where we're at. Do we go for our commander and just accept that? Yeah, let's try our commander. Play the Radiant Fountain. I don't want to play, like, too cautiously. So play the Radiant Fountain, and then if we hit with the Nighthawk, that's going to be a cost reduction of four on our commander, which means our commander will cost four. It'll leave, give us two left over. Yeah, we won't be able to do anything else. I think we just... But I still think we do it. Maybe we just tap out and cast our commander, leave Nighthawk back as a blocker? Um, because... Yeah, opponents, uh, opponents got two swords. They could easily move one. Nah, I'll just go for it. Uh, swing the blue player. Get our commander. Activate that ability one time. Brings us down to 54, and we'll get three counters on Leisha. And we're going to pass turn like that. Is this the Rift? Uh, no, it's a Return to Nature on Sword of Feast and Famine. Okay, okay, yeah. Down for that. Opponent seems to have over-tapped, unless they got something else. Oh, just gonna, they're going to draw with the Arch of Orska. Okay. Yeah, that seems fine. Uh, okay, I feel a little bit better about that. Opponent can still hit us if they want to, but it's the Feast and Famine that makes things get really out of hand, so much better with just sinew and steel, and if opponent wants to keep blowing up the blue player's artifacts, or this conjurer's closet, completely down for that. There's a pure steel paladin, yep, uh, opponent does not currently have metal craft. Opponent gonna cast the light and shadow, that's gonna give him metal craft, and more importantly, they have, like, redundant protection from our deck. Seems bad. Although, this crackling doom, it's a sacrifice. Uh, we're just gonna sit on that as long as we need to, we don't have the mana for it yet, but next turn, I have every intention of leaving that available. Opponent gets a card draw from the Pure Steel Paladin and the uh, Light and Shadow. Light and Shadow onto the Pure Steel Paladin, sure. Doesn't have haste. Wonder if they're planning to give it haste. Opponent gonna send the Weather Wayfarer into us. Yeah, that's fine. And they're gonna send Leisha into the blue player. All down for that. I'll gladly take this Weathered Wayfarer hit in order to uh, blow up another artifact over here. Glad it's not the Leisha hit. That commander damage. That stuff's gonna pile up real quick. And I see opponent's gonna leave the uh, Light and Shadow back. Uh, so it'll be a nice blocker against Arlisha. Yeah, yeah. So damage happens. Sinew and Steel will trigger. No Planeswalkers. Can hit the Conjurer's Closet. I like that. Definitely some abusable potential with Conjurer's Closet in a Simic deck. And opponent gonna get themselves a land tax. Sure. Down to one card in hand. Uh, opponents have more or less run themselves out of cards, which is good news. So we're doing okay on card advantage. We got a Arena and a Well of Lost Dreams still in hand. Also the Maggots of the Wheel. And that was after our Mold of Six, so not too bad. Opponent's going to pump up their Alicia. It's now a 10-10, and then they're going to move the Sinew and Steel over to it. It's a 12-12. Just make people lose life. Deals two damage to each opponent. Each opponent sacrifices a creature with the greatest power. No, okay. 
it just makes a sacrifice. So, you know, it'll 100% be that <laughs> if uh, when we need to cast the Crackling Doom. Opponent loses the Mana Crypt Flip. They are down to 23. Woo. Opponent's going to activate the Muzzio. Let's see what they hit. Oh, they had a Planar Portal. What? Okay. Yeah. Opponent's got themselves a Planar Portal. It's pretty nasty. Super Mana Hungry, though. Can activate that Planar Portal one time. Yeah. Rift? Gotta be a Rift, right? Art type of Endurance. That's a magic card. Opponent will get to draw. Brings back to our turn. We draw a Wear Tear and... A fumigate. Ooh, missing the lands. Missing the lands. Did not want to do that. Yeah, 35 lands is 100% not enough lands for this deck. Uh, you have a super expensive commander, so at least 37. If you wanted to say 38 lands, I wouldn't blame you if you wanted to go 38 lands for Alicia deck. That is not ideal because I really wanted to go Blood Mist and Crackling Doom. So now we're going to have to do other stuff because we missed that. Um... I think that's going to put us on probably, like, Magus of the Wheel and Crackling Doom. Old Sworn Knight would use up all of our black. We need to leave some black mana open. Okay, yeah. So I'm going to go Magus of the Wheel, and that'll leave us with Crackling Doom open. We can also Wear Terror is needed at the end step. Uh, make sure we plus our commander. I have definitely forgotten to do that in past videos. <laughs> We're going to stay back with the Vampire Nighthawk. It's a really good blocker, especially with the Wear Terror. We can, uh... Thinking about going after the blue player. Oh, they just tutored. Yeah, we should go after the blue player. I mean, when your choices are the blue player or the Simic player, like... <laughs> is there a right choice? Is there a wrong choice? I don't know. Whichever one you kill, the other one's going to do something nasty to you, so... Uh, we do know that they just tutored with Planner Portal, so maybe going after them is probably the right call right here, so... Yeah. I'm not really particularly interested in using D-Magus, by the way, because... Our opponents are all low on cards, and we're full on cards, and cards that I like. So, yeah. Probably just throw it under the bus if it needs to block something. No one's touched our Phyrexian Arena. That's been the big source of our card draw. Uh, one thing, right now we're getting crushed in terms of mana production. Our opponents are just producing so much more mana than us, and that's not a thing that I love. Opponent's going to plus their Alicia. It's a 15-15. Opponent going to try to finish off the blue player. I'm down for it. I am down for it. So they go down to commander damage. 22 commander damage. A sort of send you and steel trigger. Do we have any artifacts? We do not. There appear to be no artifacts in play. At least ones that they would shoot. They control all of the artifacts, so not going to shoot their own stuff. Unless they misclick. Now, what I'm going to try to do right here, when opponent tries to cast this Prime Speaker Zagana on their turn, which they're totally going to do, is this a, is it a cast or an ETB? Yeah, it's an ETB. So if we Crackling Doom in response, I think it's going to be incredible. <laughs> I think this is going to be, like, an amazing play. I am very excited about this. Anytime I get to take it to a Prime Speaker Zagana deck is a great feeling. I used to lose to that deck so much back in the day, so... Not a lot of love there. Okay, here comes the Rift. Yeah, I mean, we kind of knew that would happen. Also, called it, they totally had it. When you discard a Cradle, you probably have the Rift, right? Anything we were really going to do about that? No, probably not. And this is where the lack of mana production is like, this is how we probably lose the game, because now we have to recast our commander, and our opponents are just able to produce so much more than us. Ooh, a bear umbra, you say? That's getting shot. Bear umbra's not gonna work. Yeah, shoot that bear umbra. Bear umbra down. Yeah, opponent's in that our way. We're at 55, so it'll take a little while for that to uh, get us. Really hoping on land off the top. Oh, it's a Night's Whisper. Okay, what are we doing? I still want to leave up that Crackling Doom play because they're on one card, so they're they're almost definitely going to go for Prime Speaker. Can we Knight's Whisper and... Yeah, I think we can. Okay. So, Knight's Whisper... Oh, there's a land. Thank God. Play the land. Untapped. We're on five. Uh, I'm noticing a lack of two drops in this deck. There are actually 18 two drops. We've just managed to not draw any of them. Huh. We're at, we're at 11 cards in hand. Hmm. Still sitting on the Crackling Doom play. Alright, so get rid of Mags to the Wheel. No intention of using it given the current state of things. This Knight is fine. It's a 4-4. Doesn't seem like it's actually going to do that much. Uh, we're still at 9 cards. Kind of want the Arena. Arena's been good for us. Um, really don't want to send our Commander back to the Command Zone. Well of Lost Dreams is good, but it's mana intense. And we're not producing enough mana. So it's not going to be helpful to us. Other life gain... Opponents are low on cards. Gerard's not good when opponents are low on cards. So, pass turn like that. Here comes the Wayfarer. Lantax. Talisman. Pure Steel Paladin. 
Basilisk Collar. Draw a card off the Paladin. Uh, equip the Collar onto the Weathered Wayfarer, sure. Opponent does not yet have Metalcraft. And they'll pass the turn like that. Didn't recast their commander, I suppose. Yeah, next turn they probably recast their commander after you put some swords in and make a thing huge and gain a bunch of life. All right, here comes Prime Speaker Zagana. Uh, here's the moment we've been waiting for. I think we want to do it. Enters the battlefield with... So it'll come in with the counters. Yeah, I think we want to do it now. So they sacrifice that. That way it won't come in with any counters and they'll gain, like, two cards. Go for the blowouts. Ah, got him with the Crackling Doom. Nice. <laughs> I gotta run that card more. I guess I don't play like a ton of Mardu, but when I do, I gotta run that card more. Opponent gets themselves one card, draws a second one with the Guardian Project. So much better than the six cards they would have drawn. <laughs> Got him. And uh, other opponent also loses their Pure Steel Paladin, which is actually like a pretty good hit. So what I think I'm gonna wait for, I don't think I'm gonna, ca are we gonna cast a creature yet? Ugh, did not want a creature at all. Whenever you gain life, you may pay white. If you do, put a counter on target creature. That needs to come out. That's uh, that's what we call a do-nothing card. <laughs> Again, this deck isn't producing enough mana to have mana left over to be able to use a card like this, so uh, that's one we'll want to get rid of. Um, I'm going to go Phyrexian Arena and Mathis, assuming we have enough black, which we may or may not. Okay, I think we do. That'll get us a card draw. Play Mathis. So my plan right here, I think, is to go on the Fumigate, because we know opponents are low on cards, so what's going to happen is... I assume on Leisha's turn, they're going to recast their commander and, you know, probably try to cough out as many things as they can. If we catch all that in a Fumigate, then they're in a really bad spot. And the Prime Speaker opponent will probably play any big creatures they have. I can't imagine that's too many. So if we wipe the board next turn and then go for our commander, I think that's really where we want to be. And maybe we could have held the Mathis back, but, you know... We're not producing as much mana as our opponent, so we do need to spend mana. Just we need to get things done. If for some reason the Fumigate doesn't resolve, or if opponents don't play things that make us want to use it, then at least we got something into play. Yep, here comes the Light and Shadow. Ooh, opponent can get stuff back. Forgot about that. Forgot about that. They get back the Pure Steel Paladin. That'd be a pretty big pickup for them. Equip the Light and Shadow. Yep. Uh, Weathered Wayfarer coming our way. Yep, it's got pro white and pro red. Can't do much about that. Did I say white and red? I said white and black. I meant white and black. Two of Mathis's colors. So they're going to gain, what, six life off of the lifelink and the sword? Which means, yeah, they'll definitely recast their commander. I'm hoping they go commander and pure steel paladin. And then we can just blow it all away in the fumigate. So return the pure steel paladin. Oh, opponent's going to exile the graveyards. All right. <laughs> Activating this old scavenger grounds. Yeah, I'm down for that. Scavenger grounds, exile all cards and graveyards. Boom. No more Pure Steel Paladin. Opponents still gain some life, though, if I'm understanding that trigger correctly. Did they not gain life? Maybe they didn't gain the life. And here comes their commander, just like we hoped. They're going to pay the life, put some counters on it. Yep. Master Biomancer coming into play for our opponent. Yeah, that's one worth blowing up. That thing causes problems. You can follow it up with anything. Guardian Project will trigger. Oh, would have loved to have gotten rid of that Guardian Project, but the Bear Umbra. Bear Umbra's ridiculous. Arbor Elf in for our opponent. Another thing we can blow away. Guardian Project will trigger. Oh, man, that Guardian Project. Blah. Ooh, that's a Multani. Multani is such a big problem. That's going to require some exile, and it's a 14-14. Blah. With Trample. Cool. All things considered, uh, Prime Speaker Zagana opponent still got a lot done. Guardian Project is uh, really, really doing work. There's a Boros Charm. There's some Swiftfoot Boots. Okay. Maybe we go one more turn before... With the Boros Charm, maybe we go one more turn. If our commander's in play... God, we can't even cast our commander. Uh, we're still on seven. Missed another land drop. It's turn ten. We're on seven lands. That's, that's bad news. That is bad news. Um, I'm going to go Vampire Nighthawk. I'm going to play the Blood Mist. And next turn, we're going to try to gain a bunch of life. And Blood Mist on the Mathis. Uh, I don't think we're going anywhere with Mathis. No need to swing at Leisha, and uh, other opponents got a whole bunch of blockers, so I think we are staying put. Let's see if Leisha wants to fire some removal in someone's direction. But yeah, the plan next turn is going to be try to uh, gain a bunch of life to make Leisha super cheap and then fumigate. Uh, Master Biomancer is probably one of the next things that needs to die, so we're going to put a counter on that. Um, Multani also needs to die at some point, too. Opponent's going to path on the Multani. Cool. Yeah, that's, uh, that's what we needed. Excellent. 
Also glad that path wasn't hitting our commander, because that would be so bad. Land tax trigger for our opponent. By the way, opponent did grab three lands with land tax last time, which means... I think their hand is mostly lands. I don't think they... I think they have like one or two non-lands in their hand. Yep, there's the sinew and steel. That's one of them. Equip the sinew and steel. Oh, play a masterwork of ingenuity. Yeah. Get themselves a second light and shadow. All the life gain. Pump up, Leisha. Yep. Gonna send it at the Simic player. I agree with this. Opponent will throw their commander in front. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they don't have protection from green. So, Prime Speaker's a gone down, which means they'll probably recast it on their turn to try to draw some cards. Master Biromancer's still in play. Yeah, it's not good. Didn't really want them to untap with that. Whoops. Here comes a Talisman. Here comes Prime Speaker Zagana. Back to play. Guardian Project will trigger. Prime Speaker will trigger. Yep. Here's where they get down to the card draw. Here comes a Cultivate. Yep. Probably about one of the safest things they can play this late in the game. Nine cards in hand. Whew. That's going to bring it back to our turn. We finally draw another land. Uh, we also get this Falcon Wrath Exterminator. Enters battlefield. Deals Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Uh, and then deals damage to target creature equal to the number of counters on it. Yep, probably won't be needing that for a while. Play the swamp. Uh, I'm gonna hope this Nighthawk gets through. It's gonna be sad if it doesn't. Blood Mist on the Nighthawk. Swing into the Prime Speaker opponent. They'll get hit for four. We go up to 44. They're down to 26. That's gonna give us some nice cost reduction. Cast our commander. We'll cast our commander for four mana. It's not too bad. Tough choice right here. Do you leave up Boros Charm or do you go Boots? I'm thinking Boots personally. Yeah, maybe Boros Charm. Let's take a look at our opponent's exile zone. They've used Path. Uh, we're facing a Simic player. They're probably more Bounce and... Uh, gonna go for the Boots. Hope we don't get punished. That's really the that's really the plan right here. Boots on our commander. Pay five life. Put some counters on Leisha. Opponent can activate their Weathered Wayfarer. Yep, Simic player at the table. Normally by this point in the game, you can't still activate Weathered Wayfarer. Uh, but yeah, with Simic down, still can. Leave open the command tower like we're sitting on a swords or a path, which we are not, but, you know, maybe we'll draw some cards for some reason or another. Uh, another Mathis Fiend Seeker trigger. Let's go for the Arbor Elf right here. The good news is that Simic opponents already used Cyclonic Rift, and it's in exile, so it's not coming back. Uh, if they want to play removal, it's got to be something that's at least, like, somewhat fair in the sense of removal. Uh, if they have a Devastation Tide, that's a thing that could happen. Don't know if they're doing, like, Devastation Tide or Eternal Witness kind of thing, because you can loop those repeatedly, and that's a real problem. But, yeah. Uh, Alicia getting pretty big. We're not going to be able to block soon, and they're going to be talking about Commander Lethal very, very soon. Still going at the Simic opponent. Good choice, good choice. We were wide open. Prime Speaker Zagana, continuing to block. Uh, maybe they too feel like they're not in a position to take the Simic opponent by themselves, because I certainly feel that way. Here comes a Signet for opponent. Yep, Sigarda's Aid. Here comes a Kiora's Follower. Opponent will get to Scry, and uh, they'll also get to draw a card with the Guardian Project. Oh, Zendikar is urgent. We need more enchantment removal. Bring on the enchantment removal. Oh. <laughs> Karameter's Acolyte coming in. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, we're definitely going to want to blow that one away with the Fumigate. Thinking this is going to be the Fumigate turn, but that'll still give Leisha plenty of time to rebuild, and then they may not be so happy, and they've got swords from protection of all of our colors, which is kind of bad. It's kind of bad. Uh, I'm hoping we draw something pretty helpful in our next turn here. We'll get to look at two cards. Soul Ring for our opponent. Yep. Sylvan Library. Brings back to our turn. Phyrexian Arena trigger. We draw Prowler's Helm. That's a real card. Sunscorch Regent is pretty sweet also. Um, huh. So our commander will have double strike. Let's uh, let's put the life on it. Okay, so our commander is at 10 power. When it double strikes, it'll have 20 power, which is so disappointing. Uh, because if we had that, we could put one counter on it, and then we would be able to kill a player. But that is not the case. So I think that puts us back on the... Fumigate plan? Uh, opponent will survive at one, unless... Uh, well, they'll gain a couple life back because of the bounty counters. Trying to do the math. Yeah, I think it's just Boros Charm Fumigate time. Uh, make sure we got enough white mana. White, 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 white. Okay, cool. Uh, give ourselves Indestructible. Cast Fumigate. Watch Fumigate get mana drained. Gross. Yeah, the only one that's, like, really gonna get through... Uh, well, we can clear the road for our opponent. Right now, it only takes one blocker to stop Leisha. Nah. Let's do it. We know. Send everything. Oh, and that's an Arachnogenesis. Awesome. 
I'm not going to block everything. Everything's going to be fogged every way. Anyway, it's not going to matter. Uh, go to the end step. Put another bounty counter on something. I think Karamitra's Acolyte. Yeah, that thing. That thing needs to die if opponent's got removal. Here comes Lightning Greaves for our opponent. Uh, yep. Gonna put Lightning Greaves on their commander. Gonna put some counters on their commander. It's a 17-17. Keep sending it into the Simic opponent. Yep. The Trample is the one they need. We need. We could use Trample also. Opponent's gonna block with a single spider. And this is where they're probably gonna win the game. So Horizon Chimera comes in. They're gonna draw a card. They'll draw a second card with Zendikar Resurgent. So they're going to cast a bunch of things. They're going to recast Prime Speaker Zagana. They're going to draw probably 5 to 10 cards. Then they'll cast a bunch of those, draw even more cards with Zendikar Resurgent. The Master Biomancer is still in play, so everything's going to be huge. We're at a lower life total, so they probably come after us, is what I'm guessing. Uh, and that's assumingly they don't hit a Crater Hoof right here. Library and Chimera will trigger. Opponent gets a bunch of colorless mana off Mana Drain, yep. Right here they're going to cast like most of the rest of their deck. There's a Galta, yep. So when they recast their commander, that's going to be 12 cards incoming. Uh, I think it's probably safe to say good game. And opponent's going to play an Nexus of Fate. I think that's going to do it. No need to uh, watch them untap and kill us, so... I think we're safe to scoop it right there. Oh, also opponent's got 20 counters on the Simic Ascendancy. And they win the game off the Simic Ascendancy. Yep, there it is. Okay, so unpacking this game, there's a couple things that happened. We're going to talk about those, and then we're going to talk about some ways to improve this deck. The big thing that happened was a Cyclonic Rift. So that was the play that broke our back tempo-wise. We weren't producing as much mana as our opponents, and once you run into Rift, which essentially resets all of the cards you've cast, uh, it, it basically becomes impossible for us to win at that point. Like, we just can't cast enough spells because we fell behind in land. So, uh, the big thing that this deck is going to need is better mana production. Also consider the fact that your commander cost 8, naturally, and if it dies, it costs 10. That is a lot of mana. If the board gets wiped and you have nothing in hand, you need a lot of mana to be able to recast your commander. You really, really want a very high level of mana production uh, in a Leisha deck. And just in general, like we saw the other Leisha deck, if they caught any kind of card draw at all, uh, they probably win the game. Like if they find Trample or Unblockable or anything like that, then they're easily taking out at least one player, probably both. Uh, so they were very close. They had much better mana production than we did. And, you know, they were much further along. So uh, that's the first thing I'm going to try to fix. And there's a number of cards. I saw a bunch of cards that I was playing that really just don't fit what this deck wants to be doing. So I'm looking at this Cradle of Vitality. On its front half, it seems like, oh, this is probably good in Alicia deck, right? The problem is it's super mana intense. And you can just play a Blackblade Reforged and do essentially the same thing. Now, it will make some of your other creatures bigger, which is a nice thing to have. But again, I talked about in its current state, this deck does not have enough excess mana production to really take advantage of a card like this. Now, I could see this being good. Like, let's say that Rift doesn't happen and we lay one of these down. Then we can start pumping up like our Vampire Nighthawk and stuff like that. So... Uh, I won't cut it immediately, but know that just playing a Blackblade Reforged is probably going to be better than this quite often. Uh, where this is really going to start to shine is like turn 10, turn 12, turn 15 of a game where you should have a lot of mana by that point and can really afford to do things like this and then turn your small creatures into big creatures. But so where I really saw some problems, first off, we're getting rid of Wheel of Fate. Wheel of Fate is just so unbelievably slow. Most of the time that I ever see it get suspended, even if it's suspended early, the game will probably end before it gets cast. So that's not a reliable source of anything, really. Blade of the Blood Chief is cute. Mont of Agonies is actually pretty cool. Uh, one of the things, too, is that, like, basically every creature in this deck should have lifelink or some sort of life gain on it. This Serene Steward, plus one, it's just, like, it's just, this card just isn't good enough. It's a 2-2 two -two that does very little and wants to eat up your mana, so... We're going to get rid of that. If you want to pump your creatures, there are a better way to pump your creatures. Uh, just casting a True Conviction essentially doubles the power on all of your creatures. And costs a flat six mana, You know what, and you know what you're getting out of it, plus a lot of lifelink. So, uh, Basilica's Creature, uh, I need to see Extort more, honestly, to be able to evaluate it better. Tavern Swindler, fun card. 
I'm going to leave it in just because I know it's fun. And when it does work, it'll make your commander really cheap. So there's that. This Falcon Wrath Exterminator, this is essentially just bad removal. So get rid of that. Uh, Oathsworn Knight. This, uh, this, card, it just, this card just doesn't fit in this deck, honestly. I have mixed feelings about this unspeakable symbol. There are times where you'll probably have a lot of life in this deck where you can just afford to make something huge. So maybe we'll try and keep that. Magus of the Wheel is reasonable. I'll keep Mathis also just because it's fun. Uh, okay, so I've cut about, what, five cards from the deck. Uh, we talked about needing more lands. Let's get more lands into the deck. You can obviously just add basics, but uh, one land that I do like a lot and would actually be reasonable for this deck is going to be Spine Rock Knoll. There will be times in a game where you should be able to hit someone for at least seven. Uh, so you'll be able to cast a card off Spine Rock Knoll. It is pretty nice. So land count is now up to 37. Next thing we want is a Thalmatic Compass. Again, you never want to miss a land drop in this deck. So adding the compass in uh, also gives us nice protection from things coming back at us. Uh, the next thing is we want to talk about ramping better because we see a couple signets and Felwar stones and things like that right here. Your commander costs a lot. You need things that ramp multiple mana. So I'm going for Worn Power Stone. I see you have a Commander Sphere right here. I'm going Worn Power Stone over Commander Sphere because we just need more mana production. Um, and the lands in the deck, it seems like color production should be okay. So that seems all right. Um, so I feel okay about that. Next thing is going to be Thran Dynamo. Uh, the three mana off Thran Dynamo is huge. Actually, let's take a, actually, we're going to take a look at the ramp count. Okay. So let's take a look. We're going to make a pile of all the ramp cards right here just to keep a count on them. Chromatic Lantern I'm okay with just because it fixes all your mana production. Thran Dynamo. Commander Sphere gets better if you have a Sun Titan. There's no Sun Titan in the deck. I'd probably add one just because it's always good, but we don't have to do that today. So yeah, we've added the Thaumatic Compass, and we... The deck looks like... The deck was at eight pieces of ramp uh, prior, so we switched out one to get double mana production. Or actually, no, I think it was at seven because we added the Thran Dynamo. Yep. Honestly, you want to know what a good card for mana production is? Black Market. There's a lot of reasons why creatures die. Black Market makes absurd amounts of mana. The next piece of ramp is going to be Hedron Archive or... You can go Hedron Archive or you can go Gilded Lotus. Uh, you got nine five drops already. That's about... You don't really want more than that. So I'm going to go Hedron Archive. Twelve four drops is about top of the mark usually. So uh, you still got a little bit of space left in the four converted mana cost slot. So with Hedron Archive, Worn Power Stone, Thran Dynamo, and Black Market, that's going to up your mana production significantly. And... Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of the Felwar Stone right here. Things that ramp you one are okay. They get you to your four drops faster, which is cool. Um, and they do all right things. But over the course of a longer game, they don't have the same impact that something like a Hedron Archive is going to have or a Thran Dynamo or one of those. So as much as I like the two mana rocks, uh, you do need things that produce multiple as well. So now we've got Hedron Archive. Now we've got... Uh, we've already got Thran Dynamo in there. We've got the Black Market. Uh, you could add a Smothering Tithe as well. Uh, I know they're not as cheap as they once were. They're somewhere around 8 to $10, I think. But you should add a Smothering Tithe. Just add a Smothering Tithe. Like, And the reason why is that people draw cards for a lot of reasons is number one. Number two is that even just getting those couple extra tokens is really going to help a lot. In terms of getting your commander in... Uh, and the other thing that it does, too, is that people only have so much artifact and enchantment removal. You have other artifacts in your deck that you want to keep alive. They're probably going to have to shoot the Smothering Tithe at some point. Otherwise, it really becomes a problem. So if you think of it, if you get three or four treasures out of Smothering Tithe and then it gets shot, it's done its job. Like, it's done everything it needs to do, so... And uh, I'm actually going to get rid of this Basilicus creature. Extort is kind of weird because, like, you have to cast a spell, which means if you really want to get to your commander with it, you probably need, like, a lot of one-mana spells, and I just don't think it's really where you want to be. So now we've upped our ramp significantly. The curve of this deck is about average. It doesn't have a ton at the top. You actually do want probably one or two cards up here at seven converted mana cost. Because this is not a blazing fast deck. And there's any number of things you can choose from. You can go for an Aurelia. You can go for Gisela. The double damage is nice. The double combats are nice. That that stuff is all really cool. Uh, Godo is not the worst thing I've ever seen. You don't have Vigilance though. So maybe I'd go Aurelia first. But you get the idea. You want some sort of big finisher. Maybe it's like a debt to debtless. 
Maybe you want something like that because now you have all this excess mana production. Uh, maybe you want something that uh, really kind of beefs up your board a lot more. But yeah, I would add one or two seven drops to the deck. It is nice to have something big to go to late in the game. Oh, I would also easily add like a true conviction to the deck too. Like I talked about, we want all of our creatures to have lifelink. Uh, Ordeal of Helia, that's really not doing a lot for me. Let's get rid of that. Spirit Mantle's cool. That's unblockable. Scheming Symmetry is a cute little tutor card, although it's pretty risky. You're letting another player tutor. The thing you're getting should probably win you the game or prepare for bad times, so I guess it also depends on your meta, but I play in a meta where allowing people to tutor is really, really bad, so keep that in mind. Oh, yeah, the card that this deck needs, like, hardcore is Bola Citadel. <laughs> So we got rid of that Wheel of Fate earlier. Wheel of Fate is bad card draw. Bola Citadel is good card draw, and you're in a deck that can gain a lot of life. Bola Citadel is insane. Aetherflux Reservoir is not in this deck currently. Certainly a card you could add. It's about $10. I don't know what the budget for changes looks like, but Aetherflux Reservoir is going to give you a lot. It protects you in a weird way of, like, if you're above 50 life and someone does something you don't like, you just shoot them and they die. Um, it also combos with Bola Citadel. Doesn't need to be the primary focus of the deck. There are a lot of decks that want to do that, but if it happens to come up for some random reason, it's not going to be the worst thing ever. But yeah, so Aether Flux Reservoir is a card that you can add. I don't know what your meta looks like, how combo heavy it is or isn't. Um, but Bola Citadel by itself is just really good. It's going to allow you to play a lot of cards. So I'm looking at the EDH rec page for Leisha, and uh, I, one thing I noticed that's missing from this deck is life gain payoffs. There were a couple... Uh, with like Cradle of Vitality and one of the that creature that we got rid of that's all kind of underwhelming. I think you want more life gain payoffs given your ability to gain life. Uh, that's going to be things like Crested Sun Mayor. It's going to be things like Aether Flux Reservoir. Uh, Archangel of Thune, I know that one's not super cheap, but that's that one's also really good. Um, we've got Felidar Sovereign, which is cool, but Crested Sun Mare is a nice one. It's, I'm seeing about $4, and it's going to make Indestructible Horses for you. You can do a lot with Indestructible Horses, so... Probably take a look at that one. Um, uh, we didn't get to use Gerard this game, and that was really a product of not being able to ramp the way we wanted to. So if we could if we could have ramped better, we probably could have gotten Gerard in, and it would have been reasonable for us. It's actually a decent source of life gains. It's going to gain you three to four life probably a turn without having to attack, uh, plus the ability to tap things down, which can be relevant. So we're going to try to keep that one. But yeah, this deck needs more life gain payoffs, and there's any number of those. Check out the EDH rec page for that. Uh, definitely many ways to improve the deck uh, from that standpoint. One thing to think about, too, is that you don't have... Your removal's all, like, really concentrated kind of in the three converted mana costs, a lot of spot removal. If I personally were making this deck, I'd probably have some more board wipes in there. Uh, Austere Command is just, like, a must-have when you're playing white. Especially your commander is huge. You can easily wipe the board of all the small stuff and keep your commander in play, and a lot of times that'll be good enough. Also, when you need to get rid of artifacts, enchantments, and whatever else has been going on. I also wouldn't be sad to see just a little bit more, like, Trample and Evasion in the deck. We've got Luxodon Warhammer. We've got the Cloak. Uh, those are both very good. Uh, maybe maybe the Chariot. You could also use, like, a Tenza or an Onaganata, something like that. Um, the Chariot's probably actually really good because of the haste. So let's grab the Chariot. So Chariot of Victory. It's going to be pretty decent for us. That still gives us a lot of three drops. We've got Painful Truths, good card draw. Read the Bones is okay card draw. Pyrexian Arena is reasonable in a longer meta. Speakable Symbol, eh, kind of on the fence about this thing. Three, three life is really a lot. I mean, you need to have a lot of life to want to use that. Magus of the Wheel is more card draw. This deck does not care about wheels. If you add Smothering Tithe, which you should... It becomes a little more relevant, but this really isn't like a wheels deck, and Megas of the Wheel can actually be pretty slow. You've got access to black, which is really good card draws, so I think we can live without Megas of the Wheel. If you wanted to add in like an Ambition's Cost, there's actually a lot of options. You can add Ambition's Cost and Ancient Craving are both uh, similar cards. I like both of those. Uh, Moonlight Bargain is going to be very reasonable because you're going to be gaining a lot of life. Uh, it's also an in it's also instant speed, so you can hold it up if you need to. Um, and you can filter things into your graveyard. You don't really have reanimation at this point, but, you know, um, sometimes you just don't need everything you're drawing. So Moonlight Bargain is pretty good, especially when you counteract, counteract the life loss. People have been like, you just paid 10 life to draw five cards. And I'm like, yeah, I know. And then, you know, as they come around to it, they're like, yeah, you know what? I would have paid 10 life to draw five cards right here. I'm like, yeah, I bet you would have. Um, <laughs> so Moonlight Bargain is going to be pretty reasonable. Again, starting to get a little crowded at five mana now. Um, so I'd probably take something out if I added that in.
but yeah, we're still we're still a little clogged at three mana here. Um, uh, we can get rid of Knight's Whisper. Knight's Whisper is really underwhelming. Like in a fast combo meta, you might want it, but if you're playing Leisha, Leisha is not a fast combo kind of commander. So uh, the meta that you're going to be using this in, Knight's Whisper is pretty underwhelming. Again, we've got Bola Citadel. Get to Bola Citadel, and that'll be all of the card draw you need. Actually, let's do this. Let's uh, let's also take a look at the card draw pile because it might be too much card draw. We got Painful Truths. We got Read the Bones. We got Arena. We got Reforge of the Soul. We got Well of Lost Dreams. Pretty mixed feelings about this. It needs to get late, and you need to be producing a lot of mana for Well to become good. It takes away an incredible amount of your mana, but if you can use it, it can just win you the game, so I don't want to get rid of it just yet. Uh, we got Twilight Prophet. We got Blood Tracker. Yeah, we could easily part with a card draw card. Uh, Mathis is also card draw. Mathis is the least good of the card draw. You can keep it in if you like it, and it's fun, uh, but as far as like what it actually does for this deck, it's like, meh. So we're going to cut Mathis, but I get it if you want to keep it in just because it's a fun card. At some point, you want to remember to have fun while you're playing and have at least like one or two fun cards in your deck. So, you know, totally get it if you want to keep it. So, yeah, that's that's still eight pieces of card draw. That's a lot of card draw. That seems like plenty to me. Like we drew plenty of cards with the Phyrexian Arena last game. We got it in nice and early. It gets worse as it gets later in the game, but you've also got plenty of other options that work well later in the game. So that's all looking good. Still got 16 three drops. Would love to cut a three drop and just add something bigger. Uh, one thing that's not in this deck is Sunforger. And like, I know I play Sunforger whenever I get the chance to, but it really is just that good. Um, you could think about adding a whole Sunforger package. You've got a couple of targets already. You've got Crackling Doom, Bedevil, Anguished Unmaking, Crush Contraband, a few other things. Uh, Boros Charm, Rakdos Charm. That's Those are... Those are good things to have access to, so it's something you could think about. I'm not going to force you down the Sunforger path, because not everyone's in love with it quite as much as I am, so I get it, but uh, it is a thing that you could do. Um, but yeah, some of the creatures in the deck, you could have more lifelink on your creatures. I guess we didn't see that many of them in the course of the game. We saw the Nighthawk, but... Anyway, so that's a handful of changes that I would make to this deck. This deck now has much better mana production. Should be able to go late much better. Like, once it knew, once we got up around turn 11 or 12, I knew we were in trouble because we just didn't have as many lands as everyone else. And we had, like, half as many lands as everyone else, so I knew we just weren't going to be able to play enough spells to keep up. Uh, and one thing that you'll find is... As you find your mana production gets better, you can actually go a little bit bigger, as I said. So you could safely add a 7-drop and an 8-drop to the deck. Again, you have a lot of options there. Pick your favorite 7- or 8-drop in Mardu Colors and slot it in. It doesn't matter what it is. Could be a Shieldred, could be an Elish Norn, could be like a Runescar Demon isn't the worst thing. Any number of things might be nice up here to have as a go-to. But anyway, yeah, wrapping up. So we've added much better mana production. Uh, we've cut down on the 2-drop significantly. I've talked about this before. This deck had a lot of two drops. I think it had like 17 or 18 when we started. And that just means that there's not a lot of room to be doing other stuff up at the top end. In general, a two drop is only going to have so much impact. At some point, you need cards that are more impactful. So that's where you want to have things that are a little bit bigger. 13, 13 is going to be a very nice number. 16 is probably about as high as you really want to go on three drops. Again, for that reason of if you have so many three drops, you, don't, you can't have bigger things to go to when the game gets bigger. So in short, we've smoothed out the curve a bit, kind of made it a little bit more robust. We added a couple four drops from, added a couple four drops, added a five drop or two. But more importantly, we've added two lands and we've added Thaumatic Compass and better ramping. So the mana production will be much, much better. And that's what's going to allow you to get to your bigger stuff. So anyway, so those are some of the changes that I would make to the deck. Uh, and yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, feel free to comment, like, or subscribe. Thank you for watching.